Hi. Hi. Welcome from Nusa. We are enjoying ourselves here. <laughs> Eating good food. Yes. I'm Peter Kuravita, um, chef and owner of uh, Nusa Beach House, Flying Fish Fiji, Flying Fish Tokariki, and Flying Fish Samoa. Hello. Um, I've been cooking for, I worked it out 37 years um, in November, last November and uh, I haven't really thought of doing anything else. Um, it's been a long and eventful journey um, and I think that's what being a chef is all about because it's such a hard job that I remember clearly as if it was yesterday walking in at the age of 15 and 9 months into my first job uh, which my father had, I, I, I should say, uh, coerced me or told me I have to go and find a job um, into and as I walked through that door and smelt the oil and the seafood and everything else a few thoughts passed my mind. One was I want to travel the world. One was I wanted to be the executive chef of a five-star hotel. One was um, that I was, wouldn't be content just learning one cuisine. I wanted to express myself and uh, food is a great way to express myself. But lastly and most importantly I wanted to represent my heritage, uh, my Sri Lankan heritage more than my Austrian heritage in a way that to bring five-star food or Sri Lankan food to the five-star table. In 1982 um, uh, is when really I, I realized and discovered that I could cook the food of my heritage as well. And that, that sort of, um, that revelation came when I met and worked with a chef called Neil Perry. Oh. Neil Perry was opening a new restaurant. I'd just come back from three and a half years working in London. Um, I'd finished my apprenticeship three and a half years ago, left. I was actually traveling, backpacked in India for one year prior to, prior, prior to getting to uh, London and then worked for three years in London. So when I returned, um, the chef I worked for, a very famous chef in uh, Sydney, said come back and work for me and I, uh, one of the other decisions I'd made is never to go backwards, meaning never to work for the same person again or in the same establishment again. And so I said thank you very much, said no, thank you very much but please put my name out there. So I just moved into my flat in Bondi. The only thing I had in that flat was a telephone which was plugged into the wall and within 20 minutes the phone rang and it was a chef called Neil Perry who was opening a restaurant called Blue Water Grill in Bondi Beach. Um, Water and myself have always been very closely connected and pretty much every restaurant other than my stint in London has been by water. So anyway, I went, I opened this restaurant with Neil Perry and one of the things that I found was that he was cooking food from other cultures. And you know, in the 70s and 80s, all the chefs were taught French, 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 French. Nothing else really. And we all, I think any chef anywhere around the world will agree the same thing, that the French cuisine was the way you learnt and that was the basis. And so I didn't, I was good at it. I knew what I was doing. I could run a kitchen, but there was something in me that wanted me to really um, show myself as well. And Neil showed me that because we had Thai food in the, on the menu, we had Chinese food on the menu, we had all these different dishes. And it finally dawned on me that I could use my heritage to create food for restaurants that I work in or own and still express myself in a Sri Lankan way. So the short answer is my food is a combination of fresh, light seafood with the Sri Lankan twist. Now, with the um, fusion, I guess, of um, Sri Lankan food into the modern world, um, there's a few, there's a few uh, interesting bits to that. Firstly is that um, Sri Lankan food is very unique. Its, it's flavours are very unique. It's compared to many other, other countries, but to be honest, it's a very unique flavoured food. Closest would be South Indian. But the problem, like Mexican food and like many, many curries, um, it doesn't look that great on the, on the plate. So the task was to try and represent my grandmother's food because she sits on my shoulder telling me off if I don't do the right thing all the time, um, but present it in a way um, that is uh, unique and modern. So first, I guess the perception of people about Sri Lankan food, they, they really thought, well, it's just Indian food. And so um, it all came about through little bits of experimentation, but the real pinnacle was when we opened our restaurant in, uh, in Sydney and right across the water was a place called the Boathouse. Now the Boathouse had something really special called a snapper pie and I knew that what I had to do was knock that off its perch and I had to find a hook that made my food different to everyone else's because everyone cooks nice food 
And so that's where the whole idea of cooking Sri Lankan food in a modern way came about. So um, how was it perceived? Incredibly well, surprisingly well. And I'm very happy to say um, that dish is still on today and that's the snapper curry. Sri Lankan snapper curry, basmati rice and condiments. And what I did was I took that whole dish and rather than cooking the fish in the curry, I cooked the fish alone so that the beauty of the fish, the most expensive ingredient that you have is still kept separate then made the curry in the traditional way, the curry sauce, and then served it in a very modern way, which you'll see soon. So um, perception of uh, the food and the wine, we find that they're the biggest sellers here. People are always looking for something different, something fresh, something light, but always something different. And everyone and every chef has their own little hook. Mine is the Sri Lankan spin to things. That's not to say that we don't have many other varieties of food, the next side of it comes with matching food and wine. And I've found that rosé and spice goes beautifully well. So when we opened our restaurant in, um, in Sydney, we had the largest range of rosés in any restaurant in Sydney. And that was to say, hey, come on, feel, feel free about trying this food. And here are some wines to match. And spice, red wine goes really well together. Spice and tea goes really well together. I mean, you can match a whole menu just with tea, let alone wine. So if you don't drink wine, spicy food and other beverages go really well together as well. It's a, it's a journey and I think that's what food is all about. So you want to be a chef? Uh, firstly, the first adv advice is forget the TV shows. Um, don't try and be Gordon Ramsay before you can actually be the kitchen hand. And I think uh, one of the biggest problems, it's, it's a positive and a negative, is that we've had so much exposure to kitchens now in the mass media, which is a wonderful thing because for chefs, old guys like me, who've been doing it for a long time, people actually are starting to understand what goes on behind the scenes. And I think that is a good thing and so therefore, take note of what you see on television and how hard you see pe people working because you have to achieve all of those things before you can get to the next stage. Don't think you're going to be famous. Don't think you're going to be rich. But you can think you can travel a lot. You can know for a fact that you will work hard. And the way I looked at it, I was a bit mercenary when I did it. Every time I got employed, um, from the very first job, I would look, look at the person who was given to me to look after me and I looked at them and in my mind I thought to myself, in three months I'll have your job. So you have to be quite um, passionate, you have to be very hard working, but you also have to have a goal because this job, and I don't know how many people, when new apprentices come in, I normally ask the parents to come as well and I sit all three of them down, or all two of them, and say to them, firstly, why are you here? And I don't want to hear, oh, because I want to be famous, oh, because I've always cooked at home and I think it's going to be nice. I want to hear that you have passion. Because without passion, you may as well go and do another job. Be a lifeguard, be something else that's not as hard, that's not as demanding, that won't change your life, that won't um, affect your family life. I have had, in 37 years, five Christmas days off. And those have only been in the last four years and I had one off once before. So forget being normal you are now going into the nightlife and you're changing. But the great thing is there is a whole group of people who do that. My wife was a waitress. Don't marry an accountant. You'll never, never work because you'll always be asked, when are you coming home? In 37 years, we've been together 28. I've never once been asked, when am I coming home? Because my job is my job. And you know, you have to be first job. Um, get to where you want to be and then slowly at the age of 50 plus, like me, you can slowly start backing off a little bit. But the backing off doesn't come sitting back at home, it means expanding and doing more things and still being involved in culinary. And to me, um, I've got one other qualification, which is a forklift license. So I've always, I got it years and years ago and I thought to myself, well, if I can't cook one day, I can be a forklift driver. But seriously, I've never thought of anything else in my life 
it is a job that I've seen many of my colleagues and peers fall off and become suppliers and all kinds of other things. Um, if you stick to it, you will do very well. Just be passionate, keep your knife sharp and listen to what you're told. During my four years of my apprenticeship, one of the other things I, I'd said to myself is that I'm not going to stay in one place for the entire term of my apprenticeship. And I think that's really important. To you, Your apprenticeship is your study, is your experience. So make sure you get out there and try two or three different restaurants in your apprenticeship. Um, I did four. But in the last two years of my apprenticeship, I asked my chef who he knew, all his friends, and I volunteered to work for them for free. So I worked seven days a week for the last two years of my apprenticeship. And I, was, I finished my apprenticeship when I was only 19. So I, I started very early and I had a lot of energy and I did it then so that I had incredible experience to go out into the world because the day after I finished my apprenticeship I was on a plane to go to India to backpack for a year then I went to Sri Lanka to see my family and then I worked the standard 90 to 100 hours a week in London in great restaurants and even in London I worked in Michelin star restaurants I worked in all kinds of places but I thought to myself in London nobody knows me in Australia so I worked until I thought I'd learnt what I could and then I left and the faces on some of these chefs were well, why are you leaving and it's like well I need to go I need to learn more because my mission in London wasn't to be working for one guy it was to learn as much as I could so that I could bring that knowledge home and utilize it in Australia and the reward for that was my first head chef's job was at the age of 25 there is I guess a glamorous side to this uh, a chef entrepreneur to I guess to call it anything um, it's still a passion you know I, at the moment where we're starting a new a new hotel restaurant in Samoa um, Samoa is a beautiful country but the people um, are wonderful the skill level is a little bit lower so um, it's nice to say oh you're an entrepreneur chef but the reality is that when I go to those places, I work very hard. I go to Fiji five times a year. I'll be going to Samoa five times a year. So I'm away from my family for probably seven months of the year, traveling in these other places. And when I go to these other places, put on the whites, get in the kitchen, which is normally 50 degrees centigrade, and work with people to, to get my product across. So it's okay to be a chef entrepreneur, but if your product isn't any good, then it's not going to work and you're not going to get other opportunities so um, you can never I guess I guess the easy way to say this is you can never sit back on your laurels if you do take on more work it means you have to work more it doesn't mean you're working less you just have to set yourself those goals and again the word that stays with me all the time and you should put in your mind too is passion if you have a passion for this job it's so much easier and it's a lot of fun and very satisfying. This is going to be my uh, Sri Lankan thali. Okay. So we're using all Sri Lankan uh, food. So uh, brinjal pickle. I just love Sri Lankan food. It's different, do you agree? Yes. And it's really nice. And good vegetarian base as well. I'm going to put chicken nuggets on. <laughs> See it, hey? Yep. Ooh, that looks yummy.